What is going on everybody? It's Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games and today we've got a bit of a different video for you. We've put together a top tips guide for Raft, the final chapter's early game, so sit back and learn about all the things that we wish we knew when we started this game just a few weeks ago. The majority of these tips took us over 10 hours of gameplay to figure out, maybe even longer, so if you're interested or stuck, this is going to save you a lot of unnecessary and unguided grinding to get you started off on the right foot and put you in the right direction. So that brings us to our first survival tip number one, collecting materials effectively. You're going to want to use your simple plastic hook to ultimately collect materials. Since this is really your only way of collecting materials at the beginning of the game, we would strongly recommend having an extra one made as soon as you can afford the materials and then just replace it each time that it breaks. It's really cheap and it's going to save you the hassle of trying to collect items without it. It also works really well if you're able to line up a few items at a time and then reel them all in together on a single cast. The materials that are required to build this item is just two plastic and one plank. It's worth mentioning here also that if materials get too close to your raft, you are able to scoop them out of the water with your bare hands. Now for this reason, another tip to increase the longevity of your simple plastic hook is really to only use it for the materials that are out of arm's reach. Another note here would be that durability is only lost on the simple plastic hook while you're reeling in materials. It's not lost when the simple plastic hook is cast or when you don't reel in any items. A few further tips here regarding the usage of the simple plastic hook. Really, the priority items to target would be the large red crates, brown barrels, and any amount of floating planks. The crates and the barrels are going to give you the largest returns as well. They do contain a variety of items, um, including some of your higher grade resources and also the two blueprints that are required to eventually get you onto the game's main quest line, these being the receiver and the antenna. Planks are arguably the single most important resource, especially in the early game, as you require planks for virtually everything. From your weapons, to your tools, to your survival equipment, and their fuel, but also to repair and expand your raft itself. Survival tip number two, be ready to defend your raft. Create a wooden spear as soon as you're able to afford the materials, as this is really the only way that you're able to protect your raft and your progress in this game from shark attacks. We'd recommend also having a backup of these as soon as you can afford the extra materials just to ensure that you're covered when the time comes. The materials that are required to build the wooden spear are 8 planks and 3 rope. You get the rope by converting 6 palm leaves. One other note here about eventually killing the shark is that we've noticed if you don't completely loot it, it takes longer to respawn. This buys you more time to get things done without having to worry about fending off any unwanted attacks. It usually takes about 4 seconds to loot 4 flanks of raw shark meat, and the last item that you can get from um, the shark here is a wearable vanity item of a shark head. If you don't collect this item, on the 5th second his body will lay there for some time before it despawns, and then finally respawning the shark. Our third survival tip for Raft the final chapter would be to expand your raft early. Now this is going to get expensive, especially when electing to use sturdier solid wood panels, but we think it's worth the investment up front to help prolong the life of your raft so that you're able to focus on some other things. To do this, you first need to craft the build hammer. The materials required to build the build hammer, you need 4 plank and 2 rope. And again, to get the rope, you're going to need to convert four palm leaves. Now we would recommend converting the existing wood panels that you start with on your raft to solid wood panels from the build hammer options menu under repairs. The materials that are required to do this are three planks and three plastic per tile. Once this is done, you can begin expanding the size of your raft using the solid wood panels as desired. This is going to be the same material requirement as switching your existing wood panels to solid wood panels at three planks and three plastic per tile. Now you are going to need some room on your raft to begin crafting the equipment that's going to allow you to survive and progress, so we definitely recommend to focus on upgrading your raft towards the beginning of the game. 
Not only that, but this is also going to allow your raft to cover more area in the water so that you're more easily able to increase the reach of your hands and simple plastic hook to better reach materials that are floating in the water. Survival tip number four would be to repair often. Ensure that after each shark attack you have at least two planks on hand to be able to make repairs to the damaged raft tile. This is ultimately going to buy you some time and save you materials when fending off a repeat shark attack on that same tile. If you lose a tile completely, this will remove any machinery that's currently living on that tile, and the tiles are much more expensive to rebuild outright as opposed to repairing. To complete your repairs, all you need to do is use the build hammer and use the repair option in the last menu. The materials that are required to repair is simply one plank to repair 50% or two planks to completely repair any existing tiles. Our fifth survival tip for raft, thirst before hunger. Because your thirst is very likely to deplete first, and since you're not going to be able to find any drinkable items in barrels or crates that you're collecting from the water, our next tip for early game survival in raft would be to craft a simple purifier and place it towards the middle of your raft. This is going to protect it from being lost if the shark destroys an entire floor panel on one of its attacks. The materials required to complete this craft would be six planks, six palm leaves, and four plastic. Survival tip number six, drink fresh water only. Now to utilize the simple purifier that you've just crafted, you will need to craft a cup, and this is gonna allow you to scoop salt water from the ocean and pour it into the purifier to convert it to drinkable fresh water. Materials required for the cup, simply four plastic. Once the cup is created and the salt water has been added to the purifier, you'll need to add planks to have the fire start. Now this is going to begin the cooking and converting process. If you notice in your hot bar that the cup has greenish water coming out of it, that means it's full of seawater. Don't drink this because it's going to further deplete your thirst. Once you've collected the fresh water from the simple purifier, you'll notice now that there is a light blue kind of color water coming out of the cup. Drinking this is going to provide a large boost to your thirst vitals. Survival tip 7. Address your hunger. Since your thirst vitals are now looked after, the best way in the early game to address hunger needs is to craft the simple grill and cook the fish that you catch and the vegetables that you collect. Now you can eat raw potatoes and beets to keep you alive, but cooking them on a simple grill makes them much more nutritious for you to consume. The materials required for this grill, you need six planks, one scrap, and three rope. Again, you need to convert six palm leaves for your three rope. Survival tip number eight piggybacks on our last survival tip, and it's fish as an ideal food source. So on the topic of fishing, you will need to craft a fishing rod. For this tip, we would recommend that you create this tool after you've set up your grill as you can eat many different items to stay alive without needing to fish. However, we've learned, especially in the early game, that devoting time to catching raw fish and then cooking them on the grill is much more efficient than farming and consuming vegetables. For your fishing rod, the materials that are required to create this item, you need 6 planks and 8 rope. Again, for 8 rope, you need to convert 16 palm leaves. A note here about fishing is that you'll be able to catch fish that are too large for your main starting grill. We would recommend saving these until later, as they're going to be great food sources in no time. These fish would include catfish and salmon, but the fish that you're able to cook right away are palm fret, mackerel, herring, and tilapia. Our next tip, survival tip number 9, is always be cooking. To make the most efficient use of your time, continue placing planks into your purifier and grill to ensure that they are remaining operational. Whether you're sailing through and collecting materials or simply exploring, keeping some salt water in your purifier and some fish on the grill will allow you to constantly have food items to eat and drink. This is especially important since these, since these items don't spoil, you can store them if necessary until you're needing to use them to restore your vitals. Survival tip number 10 is to multitask while fishing. Another tip that we have in relation to fishing would be that you're able to move around while you're on the raft or island and while you've got your line casted. 
This is going to make it that you're able to collect items within arm's reach while your line is casted, so be sure to make the most of these actions while you're dedicating time to fishing. We've also noticed that more often than not, if you are anchored on an island, typically fishing from the coast as opposed to your raft allows for uninterrupted fishing time as the shark very rarely attacks your raft while it's unattended. This is really a great way to focus on a single task without having to bounce back and forth between fishing and having to fend off shark attacks. Tip number 11 is for hot bar management. By now, your hot bar is likely filling up with a bunch of tools, ingredients, and so on. We try to only keep one of each tool in our hot bar at a time, as well as keeping our inventory organized with materials so that you're able to use them to craft whether they're in your hot bar or inventory. It's best to keep your hotbar free for the items like raw fish and tools that you're going to constantly be using so the, these are readily available right away. Now survival tip number 12 brings us to inventory management. For this, you're likely going to want to craft some small storage containers for the items that you can't quite use yet, like the catfish or salmon that we mentioned. But there's also going to be things like copper and metal ore or just a general excess of materials. Also, you aren't able to sell any items to vendors aside from very specific fish that need to be caught with their bait, so there's no real need to hold on to items that you can't particularly use. The materials that are required to create these small storage containers, you're going to need 8 plastic, 1 scrap, and 2 rope. Again, for this rope, you're going to convert 4 palm leaves. Survival tip 13 is all about driving progression. When you feel like you're ready to begin progressing further, ensure that you have the materials to craft the research table. The materials required for this research table are 14 planks and 2 scrap. So by now, you might have collected the two blueprints that are going to ultimately help you set up for the main storyline, these being the antenna and the receiver. Now we'll cover what's required to get pointed in the right direction for this in another video, but for now, let's focus on how to use the research table and what you're really going to want it for. If you've collected these blueprints in the past, they'll have already been automatically added to your learned recipes and will now show up as researched in the table. You can now discard these blueprints since they have no further use. Really, what you're going to want to do now with this table is to put in all of the raw materials that you have, one at a time, so that you're able to research the recipes that each one helps you to make. If you've researched all of the required materials for a recipe, it's going to give you the option to learn it, and then this makes it craftable for you in the future, so long as you have all of the required materials. Early resources in the game that you're able to research at this table would include things like planks, your plastic, palm leaves, rope, stone, scrap, and nails, but then also some of your higher grade materials that you might have found while exploring some areas. Things like vine goo, hinges, bolts, and or copper and metal ingots. An important note here is that researching the item will consume it, however if you put a stack of an item in, it will only consume one of that item. So for example here, if you put in 16 planks, after researching, you're going to be left with 15 that you can remove from the table and place back into your inventory. Survival tip number 14 would be to automate your material collection. So now that you've been opened up to just how many things there are to create, and that really is just the start, we would definitely suggest that you make as many simple collection nets as possible to outfit the entire perimeter of your raft. Now these are going to allow you to focus on other things as well as preserve your hook durability as the nets will automatically and passively collect the items that cross their path while your raft floats along. This increases the speed and efficiency of which you're able to generate resources for crafting. The materials required to create these nets would be 6 planks, 8 rope, so again 16 converted palm leaves, and 2 nails. You can make nails by converting 4 scrap. One additional note on these simple collection nets is that they are much weaker than your raft solid wood panels, so you do want to be extra careful and attentive when the shark is attacking. Prioritize fighting it off of these nets as they are much more costly to create than the solid wood panels and definitely less durable as well. 
tip 15 is to add some navigational equipment. So you're booting along pretty well now. Abandoned rafts and islands are going to be great places for you to explore, to find some higher grade materials and abundant resources, much more than you're able to collect at sea. However, you will need to craft some navigational equipment in order to ensure that you're able to reach these much more often. For that reason, our next tip would be to create a streamer and sail. The materials required for a streamer would be six planks and three rope. So again, six converted palm leaves. You're also going to need three nails, which is going to be six converted scrap. Materials required for the sail, you need 10 planks, 20 palm leaves, and three scrap. Once you craft the streamer, this is going to allow you to clearly see the direction of the wind, and crafting the sail will help you and your raft speed through the water much faster. This also doubles as a fantastic way to steer your raft in the early game, so long as you're moving with the direction of the wind and not against it. For this though, you do need to have your sail open. Having the ability to now steer your raft makes reaching these abandoned rafts and islands much, much easier. Survival tip number 16, keep your raft in place. Another tip that's specific for exploring islands would be to craft a throwable anchor. This is going to help your raft stay in place while you head off and explore. Some of the smaller items can be explored without too much risk of your raft floating away as it's almost always visible and you can use your sail to kind of counteract the direction of the wind which virtually keeps it in place a lot of the time. Similarly though, you could wedge your raft against the shoreline by keeping your sail opened and in the direction of the wind. This will keep it typically um, kind of stationary long enough for you to quickly explore and hop back onto your raft before it has a chance to leave. However, there are instances where this is not the case, or you're going to arrive at a larger island that simply takes more time to explore and you can't see your raft. This is where this anchor is going to come in as a huge help. Simply equip it, equip it to an edge of your raft, and then pick it up and throw it along the shore. Be warned though, this particular anchor does need to be recrafted after each use, and it's not necessarily the cheapest. The materials required for this anchor here would be two planks, four rope, so an again, another eight converted palm leaves, and four stone. Survival tip 17 is to make the most of your time exploring. It kind of goes without saying, but while exploring the islands, you are going to want to be sure that you have the essentials with you to ensure an efficient trip and collect as many materials as you possibly can. For this reason, we would recommend bringing your fishing rod if you have one, at least one simple plastic hook, and you're also going to need to create a stone axe if you haven't already. Now if you've been following along with our tips in order, we haven't mentioned a stone axe until now. That's because it's really only good for either disassembling your raft or for kind of island exploring. Materials that are required for this axe would be six planks, three stone, and two rope. So again, four converted palm leaves. Raft tip number 18, survive on fruit. You can very likely survive on large islands by consuming the fruits that they bear. Things like watermelon, coconut, mango, and pineapple are all great sources of food for your hunger, but also as water for your thirst, all at the same time. We personally didn't farm too much in the early game, so we typically don't collect the watermelon, um, mango, or pineapple seeds. You can definitely feel free to either try these out or discard them in favor of other materials if you're really just eating your cooked fish. One note, however, is that the fruit seeds will require at least a medium crop plot at a minimum if you're going to look to kind of grow these on your raft. Also, palm seeds are going to require a large farm plot, and you likely won't be able to craft these anytime soon. So we personally would recommend discarding these items and using the inventory slot for more planks, scrap, or anything else that you can find while exploring these islands. Survival tip number 19 is to mine unique materials underwater. So while you're exploring islands, one of the biggest tips that we have is to make sure that you're exploring and diving using your hook to mine the seabeds for things like stone and scrap, but especially the new items that are typically only found underwater like sand, clay, copper, and metal ore. 
You're also able to pick up some seaweed that's eventually going to make you vine goo. This only requires, though, your hands to pick up. You also need to watch for the shark because he's going to continue kind of chipping away at your health bar as he charges you. Also, you want to make a note of your oxygen levels because once you're fully depleted, your health bar does diminish rapidly. To ensure the shark is distracted while you're diving, you could craft shark bait, but honestly, we typically just dive on the coast that's opposite of our raft and we don't usually get bothered. This has allowed us to use all of the fish that we're catching as food, rather than using rope and the fish to create bait as we typically don't have these on hand, especially of the raw variety. Survival tip 20, dry your wet bricks. So after collecting seaweed and clay from the seabed, you can research these in the research table. But you're also going to be able to craft wet bricks. So the materials required to create these wet bricks, you need two sand and two clay. Now these wet bricks themselves really aren't anything useful because you will need to dry these out before researching them at the research table. But this allows you to ultimately make the smelter. You'll need to craft a wet brick Put it into your hotbar and drop it on the floor to allow it to dry out. Now we've always placed these under a roofed area of our raft, although we aren't 100% sure whether these could be eventually dried out without needing to be covered. Rain does appear in this game, and if it's any bit realistic, that would essentially keep your wet bricks wet unless they were set to kind of dry in a covered area, so do keep that in mind. This all brings us to our final survival tip, survival tip 21. Upgrade your tools and machinery. So once you've researched your dry bricks, our next tip, if you're looking to progress further still, is to craft the smelter. Materials required to craft the smelter, you need four plank, you need six dry brick, so this is going to be 12 sand and 12 clay, plus you need to wait for them to dry out. You need four scrap, you need six nails, which is 12 converted scrap. Now the smelter is going to allow you to create the higher grade raw materials from seaweed, copper ore, and metal ore. After placing each of these in the smelter and using planks as fuel to heat the substances, you receive vine goo, copper, and metal ingots. You can research each one of these materials in the research table to unlock a slew of new high grade recipes that are really going to push you um, in your early game progression. You're really going to want to focus specifically on metal ingots to create bolts and hinges and then research these items in the research table because you're going to unlock recipes to upgrade all of your tools to more durable and higher damage versions. From here, you're also going to be able to make the next grade of cooking equipment, which is obviously ultimate for longer survival. With all of these tips, now that you're able to create these recipes, you're essentially out of the early game and more prepared than ever to knock off exploring the game's first few questline islands. If you liked what you saw, give this video a like and drop a comment or any questions that you might have for us in our comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games' YouTube channel because we do have so much gaming content on there. We definitely hope to see you all in the next video. Have a great day, everybody.